today's show, Johnny Z touches two boxes. Hi, and welcome to ZTech, the nexus of technology. This is episode two of season one, and today we're going to be talking about, you guessed it, AMD versus Intel, the two CPU giants going head to head. And it's about time that this is happening. Um, this is more or less coming out of the news from Computex in Taiwan, where Intel and AMD have showed off their latest and greatest stuff and stuff that's coming down the pipe. And it also showed us that one of the companies are getting desperate and realizing that they will be losing market share. Now, this is important to understand that. So just to uh, reiterate, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, please follow me at uh, news uh, at news ztech or uh, you know what i kind of forget but it said ztech news at ztech news so just follow us there subscribe to uh our youtube page all the information's there please follow us please comment we want comments we want people to give me feedback to see how we're doing what more they would like to see it's important that you do that again we're fresh this is season two we're still trying to figure, actually, we just figured out why the camera keeps on going out of focus. This camera was designed for Windows 7 for the application to uh, work with the uh, with the camera to stop the autofocus going on and off all the time. Guess what? I'm using Windows 10. There's no software for it, so we got to put up with the autofocus shit. Anyway. So let's go back to AMD and Intel. So AMD and Intel did some presentations and showed off what their what they're coming out with in the near future. But let's just talk what's going on right now. Intel for many years has had sort of an open book or you know, a clear advantage in the market with their with their CPUs. Their CPUs performed well. They were fairly inexpensive. Um, they were fast and AMD did not have have anything close to that. The only thing that AMD was able to do was give a lower price point but for a crappier product. So that's where they were sitting in. But a a Intel had no competition whatsoever. So unfortunately, Intel sat on their heels a little bit and they were sort of, you know, we have no real competition, so we're not going to innovate as much. We're not going to bring out many cores within the chip. So just to give everybody a little bit of a, of a background, especially the people who don't know, CPU is not the tower. It's a little chip yay big that fits into the motherboard that controls everything on your computer. Now, the chips uh, that Intel has produced, they started off with two cores. So there's more or less two CPUs inside the actual physical chip. Intel has, over the years, slowly brought it up to six with the current i7. They were, with the last generation, uh, the seventh generation, they were at four cores. At that point, at that point, AMD decided to bring out the Ryzen series, which was their sort of big bet on trying to, you know, take away a little bit of market share from from Intel. Now, I, I'm trying to be as biased as possible. I uh, know non-biased. Sorry, <laughs> wrong set of words. Non-biased as possible because I want to make sure that everybody understands both corners or both sides of the thing. I do have a bias, but I mean. I like both chips, but I don't want to be biased on this video at all. I want to help people out understand what's going on. So when AMD came out with their new Ryzen chip, which was, uh, I guess, a generation ahead of, of Intel. So the i7 being their fastest chip. So there's the i7, uh, i5, and i3. So different levels of performance and different levels of cores that are available on those chips. Same thing with AMD. AMD came out with the Ryzen 7 to compete with the i7, the Ryzen 5 to compete with the i5, and the Ryzen 3 to compete uh, compete with uh, uh, with the i3. Now we're gonna just mostly talk about uh, the seven series of chips, were, which are the higher end ones, but they all trickle down to the rest of them, so we don't have to go into detail about those. So when AMD came out with the Ryzen 7, right off the bat, they had eight cores, versus the four that AMD on that, that that Intel had on their seventh generation chip and 12 threads. So threads being multiple parallel communication with the CPU. So in essence, 
you can do a lot more on an AMD machine because it had so many cores. Windows being multi-threaded or multi uh, core capable is that when you're working on something it can distribute all the work throughout all the different C uh, cores inside the CPU hence making it more efficient work better work and make yourself work faster so right away Intel at that point decided okay we got to bring out uh, we have to bring out the eighth generation but by doing that they had they forced everybody to go get a new motherboard because the eighth generation was not compatible with the seventh or the sixth generation motherboards. So right then and there, everybody was forced to change. Mistake number one for Intel. So the uh, the i7 for Intel was or is currently right now six cores. So it still has not even reached to the Ryzen seven, which is eight cores. So again, it is. It could do a lot. Ryzen could do a lot more uh, more work, but the Intel one has a faster speed, so it has more gigahertz. It can be pushed more than the AMD can. So that's the the difference right now, or was. Now with the second generation of uh, of AMD Ryzen chips and the uh, uh, the eighth gen uh, Intel chips. The cores have stayed the same on AMD, so they didn't change that, but what they did was to be more competitive with Intel and them knowing that they were falling behind in the speed bracket, they upped the speed, not a lot, but they upped the speed enough on the, on the CPU to be fairly on par with the Intel chip. So now what is a consumer supposed to do? Both of these chips perform where, well, the AMD one can be pushed in a higher speed and it has more cores. Now, where, where, what do you decide to buy? That's the question. Where, where do you spend your money to make, you know, to make a half decent machine, build it, or or buy it uh, pre-made or what have you, and get the, you know, whatever work you're working on, get the most out of it. So here's the interesting, uh, here's the interesting thing, and it's really, it, it, it's it, it's fascinating to see how this is all working out. Um. If you, especially for gamers, because the argument is is that games use one or two cores the most. You don't need multiple cores uh, to play a game. Games are not really multi-threaded or multi-core capable. So get the Intel chip because it has a faster speed. Well, that's not a hundred percent necessarily true. Now, a lot of gamers out there like to stream. And this is one example that I've been hearing from the younger fo folks at the store that I work at, the computer store that, w that we all work at. Now, with AMD, because of the more cores, not only can you play the game, but also you can do recording. So if you are a, somebody on Twitch or you want to record a segment of your game and show how well you're doing or how crap you're doing, you can run in the background without taxing the game whatsoever because there's enough cores left over to to work the uh, streaming software so you can do a lot more stuff while you're playing the game you cannot do that properly with the intel i mean you can but there would be stuttering in the video and this is not for me this is from customers telling me this that people twitch people are coming in and they're looking to upgrade and they're all moving to the amd side now let me give you an example of what i'm doing here at home um, originally, uh, before I upgraded my machine, I had an, a first generation i5, and my machine is more or less a gaming machine slash, you know, stuff that I need to do, and you know, uh, and it becomes a, <clears throat> uh, a Plex server, so it's serving all my media to all my TVs without, throughout my house. Here's the issue with the, that was with the i5 that it drove me absolutely crazy. Okay, and I don't condone uh, illegal downloads, but you know, sometimes the situation is that you can't catch it or you can't buy it or whatever. Downloading um, uh, the Formula One race, it comes instead of 60 hertz at 1080p, it comes at 50 hertz. So when I put it onto my machine, Plex sees it and it wants to convert it to 60 hertz. So while it's transcoding all that information, on the i5, you could not do anything let alone you can barely run a web browser and you know surf around the web while it was doing work if you tried to start playing that video 
on the TV while I was transcoding it, it'd become a bloody slideshow and you could, it was just frustrating. Now I have a Ryzen 7 first generation in there, eight core, 12 threads. Now I can not only transcode that same file, watch it at the same time, but at the same time have my daughter playing Overwatch and not nothing will hitch, nothing will will stop, nothing, it will just continue working and the, the, everything will be taken care of about the CPU. That is the bonus of the Ryzen chip, especially with the second generation, which are even faster. They'll help you do stuff. So that's that's what I've gone through, and this is what I've seen with my own bloody eyes, is that you can, you can make the machine do whatever you want, and there's no hitching or glitching or what have you. Now, it's not a fair test with a first generation i5. I understand that, but at the same time, it just goes to show you what the i7 can do and what, what it's capable of. And that's important to understand. Also, pricing between the Intel i7 and the i and uh, the the Intel i7 and the AMD Ryzen 7 is literally anywhere between depending on sales, 50 to 100 dollars cheaper. Cheaper. So, when you build a rig, you can build a budget system with a Ryzen 7. That's how that's how important this is. I mean, not everybody has tons of money that can spend six grand on a machine with every bell and whistle on it, with every RGB fan and light strips and what have you on it. Some people are on a budget, but you can build a budget system and get the performance that you want without sacrificing anything, especially now with graphics card drive, uh, prices that finally have hit MSRP levels and just below MSRP levels. So now people can go out and, and afford the br uh, brand new gaming card. So this, this, all, all this is coming together and being very exciting and very good. So here's another thing that I found at a Computex. Okay, here's an interesting. Okay, the most interesting news to come out of Computex, and this I got a website that I, uh, that I got some information from. This is from Extreme Tech. And, uh, and they made the uh, the article of it, but here's the here's the interesting thing, okay? And this is where Intel is chasing his tail. I mean, they realize that they are screwed, and they need to get back into the game. Now, during Computex, Intel announced a 28 core CPU running at five gigahertz, saying this is what they're going to be coming out with, and they demoed it, and what have you. And right after that, uh, AMD announced all on their own was the AM, uh, their AMD new Threadripper 2 Threadripper 2 Threadripper I didn't talk about that before it's one step above the uh, the uh, Ryzen 7 which is just a bigger chip physically and it does a hell of a lot more so the new one the new th uh, the new um, Threadripper is 32 cores forget about the 8 on the i7 this is or not on the i7, on the uh, Ryzen 7, this is 32 cores. Now, what people found out, and a lot of journalists found out, was that the Intel running at 28 cores, not 32 like AMD, um, the 28 cores was running at 5 gigahertz. Now, here's the thing. The Intel demoed it overclocked, okay? And it was dissipating, uh, what was it? The chiller capable of dissipating 17 70 watts, so 1,770 watts to cool the CPU. This is not something you would want to run in your home PC. This was this this demo was actually a Xeon chip uh, that they just pushed. Uh, a Xeon chip for Intel is their their server system, uh, server chips, and they pushed the hell of it to say, "Listen, look look what we can do." But AMD came out with the 32 core Threadripper, and they actually showed it on stage. They didn't have to do a demo. It's like, here, we have it. We're sampling it. We're testing it. It's, this is going to be coming very soon. Because right now, the Threadripper 1 is still being sold. About $1,000 or so. Or I think it's dropped in price since then. But now, they got the Threadripper 2. So that just goes to show you that AMD has pushing is pushing to innovate. Intel was sitting on their ass saying, we got the market share. We can relax. And we don't have to do anything. I mean, people can flounder and you know not care about innovation and we'll go from there this 
is a strong kick to the ass to Intel. And I, I don't like to see that. But the best thing about this is that once these two companies start fighting each other, prices will drop. We, as the consumer, the enthusiast, the guy who's doing spreadsheets, the, the gamer, we're going to benefit from this 100%. Because these two companies are going to go at it mano a mano. Prices will drop and we'll be able to benefit from that. But right now, and because I even own Horizon 7, but I don't want to come off too crappy about this, AMD is the way to go. If you want to buy a brand new gaming system, even a work system, even now new laptops are being developed that should be out uh, probably for the back to school sales with the Ryzen chips in them with, get this, um, uh, just like all the i in i whatever intel chips have onboard video so you know you plug in your you plug in your monitor it's got basic video now here's the kicker amd did the same thing but they took their vega architecture from their discrete graphics cards put it into the cpu and now you can actually game with the system with the intel ones you can't you it will not work if you run a game it'll be at one or two three four five maybe ten frames per second with the vega with everything turned down i mean you can't you know i don't expect anything miraculous from it it won't run games at ultra resolution ultra textures blah 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 but it will run and it'll run from anywhere between 30 to 60 frames per second so that's the bonus about the Intel, about the, excuse me, about the AMD stuff. So by getting that into a laptop, you automatically get a gaming laptop, plain and simple. Not only that, you'll get a good, hardworking workhorse uh, machine out of it. So keep your eyes out for the AMD um, uh, laptops. Uh, Lenovo's making them, Asus is making them, Acer's making them, so just about everybody's making them right now. You'll be able to see them in the fall, and you can pick them one out. And you'll be able to compare side to side with the Intel ones. But again, with the built-in Vega, it's become that you get that much bonus uh, in the CPU, and you can do a lot more. So, I, I mean... I hate to leave it at this and I don't want to start an Intel AMD war. I probably will. People will complain. People will scream at me. It's just the nature of the of the internet. It's just how crazy things are. So by stating right now, go with AMD. Intel is behind right now. They will bounce back. I will guarantee that for sure. But right now, best bang for your buck, best value for you is to go AMD. Plain and simple. Anyways, that's it for today's show. My name is Johnny Z. This is the Nexus of Technology for ZTech. And we'll see you at the Nexus.